Man Among the Gentiles. Recently, a reader of mine pointed me to a blog series that a person from an LDS French group was writing, which really caught my imagination. The author of the series noted that Christopher Columbus is usually credited in LDS theology as being the man among the Gentiles that Nephi speaks of in the narrative. Uh, verse 12, And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles, who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the Spirit of God, that it came down and wrought upon the man. And he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who were in the promised land. End of quote. The author then provided this rationale as to why Christopher Columbus could not possibly be the man that Nephi saw. I agree with him. It is very unlikely that Christopher Columbus is the man that Nephi saw in vision. In the article, the author gives a glowing biography and resume of Roger Williams and speculates that he is the one that Nephi saw in vision. According to the author, the reason Nephi mentions the man among the Gentiles is to identify the beginning point of a prophetic 400-year Book of Mormon timeline. If Roger Williams is the man among the Gentiles, then that gives us a year to begin with and a year to end with. Full foundation of the timeline premise of the article seems to rest on the emergence of Roger Williams in America in 1630 as the man that Nephi saw in vision. Hence, according to the author, the year 1630 begins a 400-year prophetic Book of Mormon timeline ending in 2030. In the article, the author says, quote, I'm sure you've already done the math. 400 years from the Roger Williams signpost will be the year 2030, end of quote. Regarding that statement, one of the commenters made the following comment, quote, I'm surprised you didn't mention Agenda 2030, as in the Great Reset that's being crammed down our throats, like it or not. The Gadianton Agenda 2030 fits the timeline you've mentioned to a T, and you know the oath-taking Gadiantons didn't just randomly pick that year. The author agreed with him, quote, well put, Underdog 2, alarming on all levels if we have eyes to see. Although we need eyes to see, the 400-year timeline that began with Roger Williams in 1630, the author seems to waffle back and forth in the article as to how important the signpost of Roger Williams really is. End of quote. In the series, the author seems to waffle back and forth as to how important Roger Williams is in the substantiating timeline his timeline. Quote, I realize there are many theories as to the identity of the man shown to Nephi and that cases can be made for each candidate. I'm not interested in arguing the relative merits of the various candidates. In this introduction to Roger Williams, I've made the case that he could be the man. He's not necessary to the story. He was put there so we could ask the questions. End of quote. It was very confusing to me how he kept waffling back and forth about the importance of Roger Williams in his timeline scenario. After all, the emergence of Roger Williams in 1630 is the only concrete evidence he provides for that year being the beginning point of the 400-year prophecy. It finally occurred to me that the author probably began with the significance of Agenda 2030 and then reverse-engineered the beginning date based on 400 years. He then tried to find a high-profile Gentile that emerged on the scene in 1630 that might fit the description of the man among the Gentiles. I have no problem with this method of prophetic speculation. I do it all the time. I simply don't think Williams fits the prophetic profile. It appears to me in reading the first five episodes of his unfinished series that one of his objectives was to create a sense of urgency about funding a temple for the Lord to come to in the latter days. One of the takeaways from the series, which is not yet finished, is that the year 2030 is a huge milepost on the agenda for the globalists to bring the masses into a time of destruction, and therefore it may interrelate to a 400-year timeline that is spoken of in the Mor Book of Mormon, which began with Nephi's vision of the man among the Gentiles. I'm afraid the integration of Roger Williams as the man that Nephi saw is where he lost me. In my opinion, Roger Williams is just as unlikely to be the one that Nephi was speaking about as Christopher Columbus, and here is why. The prophetic test, texts 
suggests a very important chronological progression into which Roger Williams simply does not fit. Please note the three-part chronological progression. First, the man among the Gentiles comes across the many waters to the seed of Nephi's brethren. Secondly, after the man among the Gentiles comes across the many waters, other Gentiles follow after this man that crossed the many waters. Thirdly, many Gentiles follow after the other Gentiles cross the waters to the promised land. Roger Williams was clearly not the first, nor was he even among the first Gentiles to come across the many waters to the promise, the land of promise. He was late to that party. His brethren of the Puritans arrived in America long before Roger Williams. They arrived in the Mayflower in 1620. Roger Williams did not arrive in America until 1635. At best, Roger Williams would have been classified as being among the other Gentiles that followed after the man among the Gentiles came across the great waters. But he was more likely among the third group, the many Gentiles, to cross the many waters. Please review the text and see if you don't arrive at the same conclusion. Starting in verse 12, quote, And I looked and I beheld a man among the Gentiles, who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters, and I beheld the Spirit of God, that it came down and wrought upon the man. And he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who were in the promised land. And it came to pass that I beheld the Spirit of God, that it wrought upon the other Gentiles, and they went forth out of captivity upon the many waters. And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise, and I beheld the wrath of God, that it was upon the seed of my brethren, and they were scattered before the Gentiles and were smitten. The man that Nephi saw in vision was among the very first Gentiles to come to America. This creates a significant problem for the author's candidate, Roger Williams. The reason I bring this, the reason I bring uh, these thing, these issues up is not to deconstruct the entire series and show what I agree and disagree with. The purpose of this point is to highlight three things pointed out by the author that I think are incredibly significant and profound. To this end, I congratulate and thank the author for bringing up some profound questions and observations that are in his series. Here are the things he brought up that I really enjoyed and think are profound. He highlights the prophecy about the man among the Gentiles and asks the following questions. Quote, why was he shown to Nephi? Why does it matter that we understand who Nephi saw? And how might this all relate to the topic of destruction? End of quote. Those are profound questions. Years ago, I read one of the early sermons of Orson Pratt, and he stated something to the effect that there are not any things in the Word of God written that cannot be understood by God's people if they are humble and seeking the truth. It appears that all things in the written Word of God will be understood as the light shines forth in greater abundance. I believe that. God did not inspire Nephi to see a man in vision and then speak about this man that he saw for no reason at all. It must be important if Nephi told us about it. It must be possible to identify who that man was and why is important. Because of these questions that were asked in the series, I became focused on the, quote, man among the Gentiles, end of quote, in a way that I have never been focused on that prophecy before. I now think that I may know who that man is, and I actually don't even think the man among the Gentiles was a Gentile. Of course, this is pure speculation on my part, but I think you might find it interesting. Lastly, the author speculates that the man among the Gentiles must be important because the event represents a prophetic milepost that begins a string of events that lead up to the destruction of the wicked. Hence, understanding who the prominent figure is and when he came on the scene in the string of prophecies contained in 1 Nephi 13 through 14 gives us prophetic context which enables us to identify when the culminating event of destruction takes place. I admit that I am excited about this timeline in 1 Nephi 13 and 14 through 14 because it provides a second witness for the 400 year timeline that I have previously blogged about. Do you remember it? In my next blog post, I'm going to reveal who I think the man among the Gentiles is and when the 400 year timeline begins and ends. 
The remarkable thing is that the timeline in 1 Nephi 13 through 14 appears to match up perfectly with the 400 year prophecy in the Old Testament. Do you have any thoughts? By the way, uh, as I ponder the string of prophecies in 1 Nephi 13 and 14, uh, please keep the following definition in mind. Separated, divided, parted, disunited, disconnected.